So Billy, great to have you on the show. I mean, it's amazing some of the stuff that we've been doing. We've had a couple of shows like with the AIY folks, and now we've got the person who's leading the whole thing. So <laughs> can you tell us all about it and what brought it about? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's been a while since we last chatted, so uh, it's it's good to be here and, and have the opportunity to talk about uh, some of the work that we're doing with um, the maker community. Mm -hmm. uh, AIY uh, actually started um, last summer uh, when we were thinking about how to uh, better engage the maker community with what um, Google has to offer. And right. I think uh, everyone has really heard Sundar at this point talk about how Google is an AI first company. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that getting some of the AI that we have available uh, you know, from Google Research and, and from our, our first party product designs uh, structured in a way that could work with makers would be a great idea. Right. And so we came up with um, AI combined with DIY, do it right. yourself, and created the AIY Projects Initiative. So can you tell us a little bit about what the AIY does, or at least the first releases that you've done? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what we started with was uh, actually a, a survey to the maker community. Okay. So uh, at the beginning of the year, we, we thought, before we jump too far into this, maybe we should spend a little time and actually see, uh, you know, what, what do makers want and how do we engage the maker community uh, right. in the right way, rather than just designing something and throwing it out there and, and, and seeing if it works. Okay. And so uh, at the end of 2016, we released uh, our first uh, maker survey. And we asked some good questions uh, to learn more about makers. Uh, you know, what are the different groups? What are the different segments within the, the maker community? Uh, as well as what is their perception of artificial intelligence? And, um, you know, is it easy to use? Is it hard to use? And if you had uh, your, your hands or, or, or your, uh, the ability to access AI, what would you do with it? Okay. Uh, and we got some really good information back. Cool. And then this came out of that, right? So. It did, yeah. Looking at the survey results, uh, we saw, you know, probably you know, maybe two main groups. One is uh, professional and amateur makers, mostly right. uh, engineering folks that have a full-time job, but experiment with uh, maker tools and, and, and maker class hardware on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, prototyping a new idea for a problem they're trying to solve or, or possibly uh, an idea for a startup company that they would like to create in the next, uh, in the next few years, as well as you know, students uh, that are learning about um, computer science for the first time. Right. And uh, we, we heard from them that uh, AI is, is sort of perceived as hard, difficult, requires expensive, um, I don't know, specialized hardware and specialized right. software. And uh, we thought right away, well, gosh, we want to demystify that because it's actually not that hard to get started with. Right. Uh, and there's so much that you can do on this um, you know, affordable, uh, capable maker class hardware that's available today. Right. And at Google, we have like a lot of cloud services with the AI behind them. A like lot the, of cloud the, services. Like the voice yeah. recognition and all yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff, yeah. which naturally lends itself to something like this. It does. And uh, that's, that's really why we started with voice is because, um, you know, in the last, I would say, year or two, I think generally people have become uh, a lot more uh, familiar with and, and uh, interested in using voice user interfaces, uh, things like Google Home or Amazon mm -hmm. Alexa or mm -hmm. you know, voice capabilities in your car. It, just, it feels more natural to engage with computers using, um, using you know, what's built in, the, the English language in this case, uh, rather than having to learn a pro programming language or, or work with a, a button interface. Right. And uh, when we did survey the makers, you know, we, we clearly heard that voice recognition and voice user interface was one of the top things that they were interested in. And so uh, for that reason, we decided to start with voice. Right. And people were familiar with Google Cardboard for like uh, VR. Yeah, right? So yeah, you, you yeah. went with the cardboard metaphor. We, we did. Uh, so we stole a, a page out of the, the cardboard <laughs> VR team's playbook. It's a good page to take. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> it worked out quite well. Uh, and we thought, um, you know, being a part of the maker community is you know, not only making things affordable and interesting, but also uh, just enough scaffolding for them to learn about the technology inside. Mm -hmm. Because we feel that makers would probably, you know, have their own vision for a, a thing that they're building, whether it's a, a toy Tyrannosaurus Rex or a, a coffee robot machine. We I'd had like more... one of those coffee robot machines. <laughs> I know, right, for, for this. <laughs> Uh, if we had more expensive or sophisticated form, um, we thought that might be a, a barrier to, to, yep. to people exploring the, the technology, which is really the, the yep. purpose. Yeah. I, I work with a lot of kids, and to me, always the, the barrier to entry is either complexity or cost. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, if you can reduce complexity 
as this does yes. instead of like having a um, like a metal box and uh, the components inside it and as you reduce cost as well it's like then that suddenly makes it a whole lot easier and i know you've had overwhelming demand right we have like you said affordability is a key factor in doing something like this and uh, again back to our maker survey for just a moment sure. one of the questions that we asked was uh, you know what, uh, what what computing platform and what programming language do you currently use and you know, uh, by far Raspberry Pi and, and yeah. Linux and, and Python and JavaScript were uh, very popular with the, the maker audience, no surprise there. And so uh, right away we decided to work with Raspberry Pi for our, our kit here and, and uh, possibly what's coming next. Okay. Ooh. Um, <laughs> we'll share more. And that helped keep the price point down because the, most makers already have a Raspberry Pi. And so if we could bundle all the accessories needed uh, in, a, in a fun to assemble format, uh, such that they can put it together and only spend, you know, just a few dollars. It it, it makes it much more, um, much easier for them to get started yeah. with. I mean, for me personally, I've been playing with Raspberry Pi for a couple of years, but I just ended up like tinkering, just doing some various software stuff. Yeah. And whenever it was to do anything in hardware or any anything exterior, I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> right. But this was much more approachable. Yeah. Right. And uh, so. Apparently, they were really popular. Very popular. So uh, to test the waters, you know, we, we had this uh, information from our, our survey and, and from talking to makers uh, at events, uh, maker fairs and such. Right. Uh, so we knew we wanted to do a, a low-cost uh, kit for makers based on, on Raspberry Pi uh, and focus on voice recognition capabilities and, and how to build your own voice user interface. Right. We put a few ideas together, and then we reached out to Raspberry Pi, the, the foundation, and, and mm -hmm. asked uh, Eben Upton, the, the founder, uh, you know, what's the best way to get this in front of uh, your, your most uh, interested or passionate Raspberry Pi hackers? And he suggested, well, Magpie Magazine is our, uh, is our monthly journal that, that showcases projects that you can do with your Raspberry Pi. Okay. So I don't know, why don't we send a few of your voice kits out to our subscribers and, and see what the appetite is? Nice, and that's what this is? It is, yeah. So this is, this is, the, um, this is the unit that we actually ended up with. It started off with, cool. um, we would send out uh, some of the PCBs that are inside of this to the subscribers, but it quickly snowballed into why don't we just build a kit and brand it Magpie and Google and put everything inside? And, nice. and that's really where we landed. So uh, we, we structured the kit uh, like this and made it look like the Magpie uh, magazine. And inside um, you know, is, is uh, the actual magazine itself, which uh, you know, it has, I don't know, 35 or 40 pages about building this kit. So it's actually cool. the instruction set for assembly uh, usage and, and how to hack the kit. Oh, nice. Uh, and then, you know, Inside, we also have uh, the cardboard form that you fold together. So uh, this is really fun to fold and, and, and snap into like place. This. Yeah, that's before. Like this is after. That's after. <laughs> and then um, you know the the PCBs that go along with it. Uh, this is the hat uh, voice hat, which has a, a microphone and amplifier audio output. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the actual microphone is is separate uh, with an extension cable that goes back to the voice hat, as well as the speaker and the activation button. Yeah. And just an interesting, uh, interesting thing, the, uh, the microphone board, we actually uh, made it a separate board uh, which attaches back to, to the main hat because we felt makers, as they're exploring creative forms with what they're doing, may want to place the microphone ah. in an interesting place, like maybe okay. in, the, in the head of that Tyrannosaurus Rex form or in the front of that coffee robot, nice. rather than have you know, the whole uh, computing platform you know, stuck right. to, to that side of their So of a their lot project. of thought has gone into this. Yeah, the more we got started with it, the, the, the more uh, involved we became <laughs> and, and really wanted to, to put together a kit that has you know, good value for the price, and, right. and it prompts people to explore, um, you know, their, their inner creativity about what they would make uh, with a voice user interface. And, and I know you've worked a lot with people in education right, for this. Well, we have, uh, and I, I guess it should be no surprise, but um, we, we started out uh, really trying to get Google artificial intelligence in front of this, you know, amateur and, and professional maker audience, as I described before. But as the, as the kits went out, uh, you know, more and more demand of, hey, I, I'd like to get one too. And, and eventually uh, Raspberry Pi or the Magpie put them up on their website for sale and, and they sold out right away. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we found was uh, so many teachers and school club organizers uh, saw the kit and felt it would be a great way to introduce their students to computer science, mm -hmm. uh, connected devices, artificial intelligence. And so, yeah, a lot of demand from schools uh, yeah. in, in order to, to, to get that started with Raspberry Pi. When you first told me about this, I said, I need to put that to the test, yeah. you know, and just see what it would be like before we shoot something like this. So to put it to the test, we gave it to some high school students to see what they would build with it. And right. They, they built some amazing things. Should we take a look? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, cool. cool. You can also have it to turn left. 
turn left. Nice. Stop. Pawn to d5. Yep, and it just takes, and then you go on. Shop for a New York Mets jersey. And now she's done. Candies. Giving you two candies. <laughs> so we get plural as well. Nice, and red is my favorite, so I'm glad I got a couple of reds. What struck me about that was like how some of them were so inventive with external hardware. Yeah. Right. So I thought like with only five days to work um, with right, they might hack some Python scripts together and stuff like that. And some of them did. And it was really impressive. Sure. Yeah. But there was like the, that one uh, that one team that they built that little hexapod. Yeah. The, the little spider that's crawling around. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Very cool. So it's like uh, they, they took three servo motors and then they had like a little Bluetooth circuit and then they used this to do voice recognition. To voice control the, yeah, the motion of the robot, yeah. And then because the Raspberry Pi and the image, the AOI image had like the Bluetooth drivers on it, they That's were right. able to just send Bluetooth commands over and the effect of that was. Wow, I'm glad to hear it was easier for them to get started. <laughs> I, I, I didn't believe they would be able to do it so quickly. But yeah, five days was, you said? Yeah, five yeah, days. Amazing. It was, it was really cool. And, and then part of the other feedback that I thought was really neat was around Python hmm. uh, because some of these kids had never used Python before. Hmm. And so it was a pretty good, choice for to get them started with with python programming yeah and yeah. it's uh, by open sourcing everything and it's on your website right and your website is yeah aiyprojects.withgoogle.com and we've put a link to it in the description down yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> now in order to work like does all this need to be connected to the cloud well the the default use case uh is is cloud connected and, and we uh demonstrate how to use the google assistant uh, mm -hmm. sdk for that you know how to interact with google google home kind of functionality uh, and then also we, we uh, show you how to connect to the Google Cloud Speech API, which is a more uh, sophisticated voice recognition, natural language processing library, 80 different languages, hence right. on, on jargon and, and that sort of thing. But no, uh, we, we also include, or will soon include, uh, the way to do it on device uh, using a TensorFlow model that can run uh, on the oh, Raspberry Pi. So, so you can do the cloud connected case as well as the uh, offline case. Okay. So even like a small, inexpensive computer like yeah. Raspberry Pi, we've got TensorFlow speech recognition. That's right. Well, we'll have it soon. We're, we're just a few weeks away from making that uh, available as a release on the website. That's exciting. Uh, so yes, we intended to include it with the launch, uh, but we um, were a little bit slow gathering the training data needed to, 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 to craft that model and make it available. Right. I saw there was like a link went out. Yeah, a weeks yeah, ago, that's right. right. That so, is, so. Uh, there's a link on the website, uh, aiyprojects.withgoogle.com slash voice. Okay. And if you can look on the left nav uh, under the maker's guide, there's a link to, um, to, to uh, understand how to do it on device, which right now there's just a simple step to submit your speech uh, right. so we can capture... Um, you know, people saying the words that we want to put into the vocabulary. And I think for now we're looking at simple transport type of controls, words like stop, go, left, right, up, down, things that you might tell a device to do to command it to, to take some action. And once we have uh, enough uh, data coming through that channel, we'll begin training the model and then release uh, not only the model uh, so that you can run it uh, inside of the kit, offline, yep. uh, but also release the training data. So, you know, the spirit of, of AIY is, is very open, open source, freely available, low cost yep. uh, when, when you have to include the accessories. Uh, and so we want to make sure that the, the data that we're gathering through the website to train the models is also uh, freely available for everyone right. to take and, and maybe create their own models uh, if that's right. what interests you. So the more people that do that to train it, the better the model. The better it be, gets. Right? Yeah, the higher accuracy, the the, the better response. Yeah, because I responded to that when it first came out, and I sent my voice in, and I just hope lots of other people do yeah, it. Yeah, or yeah. this is only going to be able to recognize Irish accents. I, I did as well. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, I, I did as well, and and I've just been looking at them coming through, and we're we're having quite a good response. Okay. So thanks uh, for everyone that's done that, and and let's keep them coming in. Keep them yeah. coming, and we'll put the link in the description below this video, right down here. Perfect. Great. So given that this has been so popular, where do you think you're going to go next with it? Well, I think the general direction that we're going next is to bring more um, more ways for, uh, for, for people to create interfaces uh, for computers uh, that are, are natural. So if this is uh, using your voice to, to communicate with a computer, what are the other ways that human naturally communicate between themselves? Like you and I are, are interacting through voice, our ears, our eyes, and, and hand gestures. So yeah. 
looking at a way to bring those technologies uh, into low-cost, affordable kits for people to explore, uh, maybe mix and match and, and build more interesting things with uh, is kind of the direction that we hope to go this year and next year. Yeah. And me personally, I've been like tinkering in the makerspace for a little while, but, yeah. but having something that easily expands the boundaries of what I can do in the makerspace is just mind-blowing. So I can't wait to see what you do next. Fantastic. We'll <laughs> so make that sure that you get the kits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking this one. <laughs> so thank you so much, Billy. This has been a real pleasure. And there's so much fun to play with this thing. And I'm hoping many, 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 many more people in the future will be getting hands-on and building stuff and building too. really interesting yeah. things with it. More makers, more kits. We want to see what people do with it. Just keep making awesome stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So if you want to learn how to build one of these for yourself, if you want to order the kit, uh, aiyprojects.withgoogle.com. It's packed with resources. There's instructions on how to build it yourself, of course. Uh, open source code so that you can extend the models in this are there. The voice models that Billy mentioned are also in there. We've put the link in the description below. Please go check it out. And I can't wait to see what you'll make. Thank you. And thanks again, Billy. Thank you. Thank you.